This building, Sellers Yard in Arundel Street, Sheffield, was built in the mid-19th century and contains a series of workshops related in various ways to the silversmithing and cutlery trades. In a workshop on the second floor, Mr. Watts, the last self-employed teapot handle maker in Sheffield and possibly in the UK, is in his last day of work before retiring. On this last working day, Mr. Watts demonstrates for us the craft by which his family have earned their living for some five generations. Fiberboard is checked against the pot for thickness and is then covered in whiting so that the design can be drawn onto it using a 7-8 pencil. A template is used to make the outline. The choice of styles from up to 500 templates was common in the peak period between the wars. But now the range is reduced to a few standard patterns, unless the maker of the pot has designed a special handle. The bandsaw used to cut the first rough shape is a three-wheel bandsaw made in 1910 by Henry Riley. Originally, it was powered by steam, in common with all machinery in the yard, until the steam engine was replaced by electricity in 1921. The blade of the saw is over 12 feet long. The roughly cut out shape is offered up to the pot and the positioning of the sockets marked. The pegs to go in the sockets are formed by making cuts with a tenon saw and then using a knife to cut off the surplus layers of the fiber board. During this work, the handle is held in cutter's clamps, made of wood, and dipped in water and whiting, which prevent damage to the handle. The handles are then marked to get the exact fitting to the sockets. The tools in this workshop have accumulated from many sources. Many of them have been passed down through generations of craftsmen, but are well over a hundred years old while others, which need frequent renewing, are made by Mr. Watts as he requires them. The most used tool is the Freut, spelled float, but always pronounced in the traditional South Yorkshire way, which is a single cut file which is made by the craftsman, each one lasting about a year. Here, from left to right, are a half round floyt, a strong floyt, and an average one. The vice used, incidentally, is one of a particular pattern which is seldom seen nowadays, and is called a leg vice, having long legs which reach down to the floor and provide maximum steadiness against the movement of the floyt. Next, the pegs are rounded up until a perfect fit is obtained and no daylight can be seen between the handle and the socket. Mr. Watts, at his retirement, was making about eight handles in a day's work, though at the peak of the trade, he would often have made as many as 12 in a day. In 1947, for example, there may have been up to 1,200 teapots and coffee jugs in the workshop at any one time, with, naturally, several craftsmen working in the shop. With the handle now fitting the sockets, the main part of the handle is rounded up, using first a half round rasp, 
and then a half round smooth file. particular design has lines carved into it. So these are now marked and cut in it with a sharp ploit. With the ploit work now finished, and the handle in its final shape, the finishing process begins. First a scraping knife is used to remove the marks of the floyts and get a good round shape. Then the handle is sandpapered smooth first with a fine two-grade paper, and then with a number naught. For the last 50 years or more, the handles have been made from a special man-made fiber, produced from a compressed paper compound, and matured for six months before use. Black, gray, and chocolate are the standard colors used. Before this fiber compound became available, handles were made from ebony, or boxwood dyed black, together with the occasional use of rosewood and ivory. The teapot in this film, incidentally, is made by J. Drury of Cambridge Street. Once the craftsman has checked that the handle is satisfactory, it goes on to the polishing stages. First it is glazed on a wooden wheel covered with felt and dressed with either fine emery or alloxite. Next it goes on to a 12 inch coarse dolly driven from the same central power supply. This dolly is of stitched colored cotton and is dressed with a compound of fat and brick known as a composition brick, or a dolly brick. Finally, the handle is glossed off on a white, unstitched dolly, which brings it to the high shine and perfect finish which is necessary for high quality silver work. The finished handle is placed in the pot, and the two together are drilled to take the silver fixing pins which will eventually hold the pot and handle together. The pot and its handle are finally married. Mr. Watts hastened to point out that normally a pot would remain in its protective wrapping all the time it was in his workshop. Here he is unwrapping it only to demonstrate the final effect. The entire time of manufacture of the handle has been nearly one hour. The workshop in which he is working has been continuously run by his family from the day that the building was first opened. And today, the century and a quarter of that tradition finally ends.